All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony again, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Brittany with us. How are you, Brittany? Hey guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time on your Friday to spin and share some jewels with us. I sincerely appreciate it. And for those of you that choose to stick around to the end, you'll have an opportunity to earn a complimentary gift. So stick around and let's see what Miss Brittany wants to share with us today. She has an awesome Ooh. So Brittany, start us off just so that we get to know you a little bit and tell us one motivational quote that really inspires you, encourages you, and gets you going. So one motivational quote that I truly love, and it's, I think I kind of made it up myself, truly, um, but it is, it's better to have tried and fail than to not have tried at all. Um, people may be more familiar uh, with the Oprah Winfrey's version, which is to um, try something you think you're not good at, fail at it, uh, try it again, and do better the second time. <laughs> yes, and I, I strongly believe that we don't know what we're capable of doing until we try, right? And yes. if we fall flat on our face, then so be it. At least we tried it. We can't say that, oh, I wonder what it would have been like if I had tried. I know there's plenty of things that I sucked at and I just did it just because I was like, well, why not? <laughs> and so I did it and sucked at it and I just knew I wasn't going to do it ever again. And then there's some other things that I tried. I was like, oh, I'm really good at this and I mm -hmm. could be strong with it, but I didn't know that until I tried, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. So relate that to a previous situation or a current situation where maybe you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you had some unforeseen challenges and circumstances arise, but you were able to meet your goal at the end of the day and bring that to fruition. Okay, um, well, I can just take you back to my junior year in college. Um, from January to June, I had actually found myself where I had been in jail for three times that year, that, year, that time wow. period. Um, and it just was like off the cusp of getting out of a really bad relationship. I was in a very downward spiral of depression and really dealing with alcoholism at that time. Um, and, you know, you, I kind of, that third time I was like, what in the world are you doing? Like, what what is going on here? And really just like reassessing everything that had gone on in my life and really saying, like, is this the path you really want to go down? And, you know, what, you know what's going to be our next step? And so I really just had to take a step back and evaluate, you know, like the things I have been through, but really started to ask, stop to look at myself as a victim and saying, why me? and really start to ask, what am I supposed to learn from this thing? And what am I supposed to take into this next journey of my life? Um, and so at that point, I really just kind of hunkered down. I got really focused on getting back into school and getting back on track. At that point, I, had, I was going to miss my graduation date. I wasn't going to graduate on time. Um, and so I just accepted that. Um, and just really moved forward um, of making sure that my, you know, my grades was back on track. I was back, you know, to be actually accepted back into school um, and, and really start to, how can I make myself a liable candidate, candidate after I graduated? Because one of the biggest things is I was gonna have this degree, but people were gonna look at me and say, well, we look at, you know, your degree, but then we look at your, your record and like, it doesn't match what's what's yeah, going yeah. on. And so I had to I had to make people see me and not see what was on the paper. Um, and so I really just started this whole thing of what I call rebranding myself, what it really meant to be Brittany Jarrell Brown. Um, and so I started like taking like these out of the world internships that I don't think a normal person would have applied for. Uh, I applied to NASA. If you and, you know, this is coming off the cusp of saying that I had been arrested for three times. Right. And, you know, no one would have thought to actually do it. And, and for me, I, I did it. And I got the job. And wow. it was one of those moments where it's like, okay, if I can do this, I know I can do the next thing. 
And so I just kept like taking like those high risk, those I have to jump off this mountain cliff and see where I land. Um, and that's just where I am today. I just kept leaping in, until I, I found myself back where I wanted to be. Awesome. I <laughs> love that. And it's amazing that you just took a stab in the dark and said, well, what can I lose? I have some to gain, but what can I lose? I'm just going to apply for it and see what happens. And then you end up getting the job. <laughs> that, that's, that's amazing. And then when things like that happen, it does make you feel like, well, man, I can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely did make me feel um, in that moment of like, you know, I made it. And it wasn't that I made it like I made it to this mountain peak, but it's like I made it out of this hole. You right. know, I, I'm, I'm finally. I can have fresh air now. <laughs> yeah, that is that is beautiful. Can you talk a little bit about any support that you may have had through that process? Or was it you by yourself? Because I know for some people, they may have a goal or a vision or, you know, an idea of what they would like to carry out, but they feel like it's just them. Like they don't have the support that they need from family or friends or or otherwise. So can you talk a little bit about people that are, struggling with the concept of getting from point A to point B or Z and finding support to help them along their journey? Um, well, one thing that you have to do is put your pride aside. This, uh, the idea of thinking I'm going to do it all by myself is just not, it's not realistic. Even the people right. who say they did it by themselves, it was someone in the background still helping them do something, no matter how big or how small the impact was. I truly had a village. I mean, I was living um, about six hours away from my 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 support hub, you know, like my my mother and my father and uh, the majority of my brothers and sisters, and and so I really learned to just depend on who were who was around me. Like my hairdresser became uh, my spiritual counselor and my prayer warrior. And um, I, you know, I became, I started to realize that if I wanted to go to the next step, that I had to reassess my friends. And not saying that I had to leave some friends behind, but I had to, you know, they say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you might be in the wrong room. Well, yeah. I had to find another room to go into. Um, and that was that was a, a uncomfortable period, but it was people who I needed to challenge me. And so I started to like look around me and my program as far as who I was an undergrad with, people who I went to grad school with, um, a lot of my my colleagues that I was working with at NASA at the time, and and really start to see what did I, what could I pick from them and what could I learn to take that into the next the next stage. Um, just other people who were just there. I mean, I was living with someone because I could not support myself. And so I had to move out of my apartment and actually move in with one of my best friend's mom. Um, and she took care of me. I mean, she gave me a place to live. She brought me food. I, I had a totally different diet from the rest of the family. And she will still make two separate dinners. And right. she will basically buy two separate uh, groceries to make sure that I still had food. And so it's, it's people like that, um, that were really not, you know, they weren't my core, you know, they weren't my hub back home, but they became my hub here, um, in Virginia. Yeah. And I think as women, we also need to learn how to delegate and how to find people that are good in specific areas. I know for me, even if I know how to do something, if I don't feel like doing it, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give it to <laughs> someone else that absolutely loves doing it so that I can focus on what I really want to do. <laughs> and it's not like I can't learn how to do it. There's, there are several things I know how to do, but if you ask me to sit down and do it, it will never get done because I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that, you know, finding people that that is their skill area will allow you to excel even further because now you're focusing in on your specific craft. You could go a lot further when you're focusing in on that as opposed to trying to do everything that required, that's required for your vision. And then also, I think that it's important for people to locate people in your local community and online mm -hmm. even that have similar interests because a lot of times if they have similar interests and they don't mind talking to you about what your goal or your vision is because 
they're they're interested in that subject area. That's not to say they're gonna you know do all your work for you, <laughs> but at least it's someone you know as an outlet to vent to and talk about yes. ideas. Yes, and that is exactly what um, when I mentioned like the um, like my colleagues and uh, my cohorts, people who I was in in school with. That's exactly what they became. They became this network of people that you can now um, begin to gain knowledge from them um, right. and, and start to build that into your own um, you know knowledge database and take it forward. Yeah, yeah. I think that networking is key when you're looking to move to the next level. If you remain a man to himself, well, you're not going to move very far oftentimes. <laughs> You'll remain that man to himself, only talking to himself. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about self-care because as we're talking about you know a man unto himself there are points in time where you will want to retreat away from everybody else and what everybody Amen. else is doing or saying it's important for us to spend a little time to self-reflect and to become more self-aware so can you talk a little bit about maybe some things that you've done to provide yourself with self-care and how does that translate to us living out our core life purpose and having the energy to do so? Um, well, one of my biggest things of self-care, I'm a big reflector. I'm always in that retrospect mind of how can I do something better? You know, where's that, that period where I, you know, I might've missed it by a smudge and I can just make it great. Um, you know, you can always go from good to great and you can always go from great to greatest. Um, you know, the thing about it is you, you know, making small increments of improvement will always get you to a better place. Um, so I'm always reflecting on everything that I do. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Sometimes I think I can <laughs> over reflect. <laughs> yeah. but, I think, but I think taking the time to really look at a situation um, and and really say, how can I make this better? One thing that I was focused on maybe about a year ago was really uh, my tone. I was going into a new team and I needed to really uh, monitor the way that my voice elevated up and down during meetings. And so I actually had a friend who would kind of sit in the back and she would kind of say, she would kind of give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if my voice elevated. Um, and so that was a part of, a part of my package of self-caring because it's a part of my reflectiveness. Um, another part that I, I do is daily devotions. Um, and it's, I have a devotional Bible. I read it every morning. Um, again, it goes back into that whole reflection. How does this pertain to me? Uh, and sometimes it's not about me. A lot of times I read a passage like, oh, I need to share that with everyone. And this is thing that, you know, I send out a text message or email. Um, and then just do something that just makes you happy, that just makes you feel you. I mean, those, those moments that I just have to go, maybe go get a massage or I have to go get my nails done. Um, when I was recovering from getting out of a really bad relationship, I got into fitness and I, I, I was running like crazy and I was doing all these marathons and 5Ks. And, and at that time, that was just a part of my world. It was a part of me kind of getting back to who I am. So I always say, you know, whatever makes you happy, build it into that. Um, that always is going to feed back into having a purpose-driven life. Um, you know, taking that one thing that, that makes you happy and building on it will always give you purpose. And it's not really what makes you happy, but how are you putting that into other people's life? How, how are you spilling what you have and your goodness to help other people have goodness as well? Um, that will always, you know, bring you back to a full circle of seeing, you know, your gifts help, help other people um, bloom their own as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. To always be in that, mindset of service to mm -hmm. others yeah. and I think that the more you do that and put your gifts out there I think the better you just feel you know you feel fulfilled because you're doing something that comes natural to you that you love and then you're seeing other people appreciate it and it just causes a ripple effect you know when they feel great then they treat the next person great and the next person treats the next person great <laughs> so yeah. I mean, at work we call it being a servant leader we're always yeah. saying you know, how can we be a servant leader to our teams how can we build that into the culture 
um, of the of the program that we're in. That is like one of our our number one values is to be a servant leader. Yes, yes, definitely. Talk a little bit about how you may have gone through a challenge that you think that other people might be maybe afraid to talk about. Because I know that you've had some deep personal things in your life that maybe in the beginning you didn't necessarily want to talk about because you were going through it and it was difficult to talk about, but maybe a challenge that you've had that was difficult to talk about that later on you said, you know what, it's not really about me, it's about other people and serving other people and you became more comfortable with sharing it. Yeah, um, well, just recently, last month is I, I was able to share my story, my experience with domestic abuse and it had happened uh, 10 years ago and it was my first time publicly ever speaking about it. Um, and it was one of those things where um, in the beginning, I felt that it, it was a reflection of me, like it showed that I was a failure. And so I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want people to look at me differently. But then I realized that it was something to share out of, even though I did go through that, um, just talking about the whole process of recovering from it, from it um, was was so precious within itself. And it, it should not be something that should be kept so, so quiet. And, um, and so I took a leap of faith and I actually spoke about it publicly. Um, and we, we had some great reviews. I mean, it was a lot of women that actually inboxed us, um, at, you know, through Facebook and Instagram that said, Hey, you know, your story resonated with my life. And, um, and uh, we go through those moments a lot and it's some, you know, some take longer than others. I mean, I could talk about my stint with alcohol, alcoholism way before I could talk about the domestic abuse. Um, right. And it just becomes just how deep it is. Sometimes you still have to kind of clean that wound up a little bit before you share it. Um, but one of the biggest things that I always say about anything that you go through is silence is a killer. Um, when you're silent, you, you are hoarding something on the inside. Um, that really starts to manifest into that could that become a hindrance to to your prosperity. And so when you're able to to start sharing those testimonies and actually seeing um, the goodness and the things that have came out of it um, and how you've grown from it and share that with other people, people begin to see there's someone like me. There's someone who went through the same thing that I went through. And when I started sharing those stories, I realized I wasn't the only one. Yeah. Um, I realized other people went through it as well. And you begin to network and you begin to share and saying, you know, how it made you better. Um, and so I say for anyone out there who, you know, even if you're going through it today or you've been out of it, um, you know, be willing just to, the smallest conversation helps. You know, I started yeah. talking about my domestic abuse just with very close friends. And then it built into a friend who actually was going through it herself and we talked about it. And then it became, it just, every step, it grew higher and higher where I became, okay, okay, now I can talk about it publicly. Um, so just having a conversation with it, even with yourself helps. Um, yeah. In the beginning, I had a notebook that was for anxiety and it was really just for me just to, to write down all my thoughts. Um, and so even that expression of just writing it still helps get out the feelings. Um, and one day you can actually vocalize it to a, to a larger audience. Yeah, and I think that at least finding a close friend or a couple of close friends and being able to have open and honest conversations is helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people feel like they have to be on stage to talk about it when in all actuality no not really <laughs> you could go to a local meetup group i know in my area we have meetup groups for various topics mm -hmm. and just be in a group of 20 people and you all are going through something similar and you just talk to 20 people but it sounds like 20 people is not a lot but 20 people is a lot of people when you think about that it will allow them to also open up to their friends and mm -hmm. then those friends to open up to their friends. So I think that you said something that's key and that's to start small. I mean, what did we do 
before social media. <laughs> we had conversations with people and it was easy to do. I mean, it's, it sounds so simple, but it's like sometimes, particularly when I'm talking to millennials, when, when I'm talking about meeting up with people in your local community, they kind of look at me like, so how do I do that? <laughs> you know? But that's all we used to do. We didn't rely on a social media platform of 1,500 friends or more to get a message out. So I think that, you know, just starting in your own local neighborhood, why not your street? <laughs> you know, so many people talk about, I don't even barely know my next door neighbor. And when I grew up, all of the neighbors on my street knew each other. We were all outside talking to each other. All the kids knew each other. Everybody was watching out for everybody else's kids. So I think that just, you know, meeting people right there in your local community is helpful. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the one of the reasons why the, the dealing with the alcoholism came quicker than talking about the abuse is because when you go to AA, that's what you do. You talk about it to a group of people. Um, and so it, it, it started, like you said, you know, these locals who, you know, are coming to, to the same, you know, same reason why you're here, you know, they're going through the same stuff that you're going through. And so you find those, those support groups like that, um, it does become easier to talk about it. Yeah, definitely. The more that you can talk about it and see that other people actually resonate with the message the more you feel like, okay, what's the big deal? <laughs> you know, you've already done it once, you've done it twice, I've done it five times, so what's the big deal? So yeah, I to totally agree with that. What would you like to put out there as far as you connecting with people? Because I'm sure that there are going to be people listening to this that are going to want to collaborate with you or connect with you in some way or even learn more about your story with domestic violence or alcoholism or anything else that they see that they just see that Brittany seems like a cool down earth person. What's the best way for them to connect with you? And what are the best type of people that you want to collaborate with? Um, well, the best way to connect with me will be via um, Instagram, which my name is Mrs. Jarrell Brown. That's M-R-S-J-B-O-R-W-N. Um, Mrs. J. Brown, that's my name on there. And all uh, of her contact info will be in the description box, you guys. So you yeah. don't have to run and go get a pen or pencil. <laughs> it's all in the description <laughs> box. <laughs> um, I, I love any woman who is trying to empower another woman. Um, I am, you know, I found a nonprofit called Sisters Towards Success. And our mission is about women empowerment and the conclusion of faith. And so anyone that is looking to make a collaboration within any of those platforms or streams, um, you're more than welcome to reach out. Um, definitely feel free to follow us on Instagram as well. We are Sisters Towards Success, and that is just one name. Um, and that'll be in the link below as well. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. As you guys hear, she's all about sisterhood. So if there's a story that you also want to share with her and gain some type of support for it, she obviously is welcoming and she'll support you on your journey as well. And for any of you that are listening and you say, you know, I would love to be able to share my experiences as well. You can get in contact with me and I would love to interview you for one of the future episodes. And then if you just want a network of people that you want to connect with on a more intimate level and get to know me on a little, little more intimate level and earn the complimentary gift that I talked about earlier, I invite you to join my Nutrition for Busy Women Facebook group. And that link is in the description box as well. It's the Nutrition number four, Busy Women. And we're not just talking about nutrition from a food consumption standpoint. We're talking about it as far as the mind, body, and soul. If you're looking for support in the area of looking further at your personality and discovering what your unique gifts are that you can put out into this world as well, I'll offer you a complimentary assessment when you join. And I am all about supporting women no matter where you are in this world and whatever walk of life that you come from. So Brittany, are there any last words of encouragement that you want to share with us today before we close? I just want to tell all my sisters to embrace all your failures. There is a lesson to learn from everything that we do in life. Yes, thank you. There's a lesson for everything. I think that even our 
worst situations that we feel like, oh my gosh, why me? Why has this happened to me? I think that there can be light that comes out of it. Just as Brittany talks about her domestic violence situation, her alcoholism, being in jail three times now, did it feel good while she was going through it? No, but you see that she's living now and she was able to impart wisdom and encouragement to other ladies that may be going through something similar. So there's light that can be brought out of our trouble. So I want you guys to always remember that. You guys have an awesome rest of the day wherever you are in the world. And don't forget to share this out to ladies that you feel that can benefit. And again, if you would like to reach out to me and share your story, I would love to have you on one of our future episodes. I will talk to you soon. Brittany, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> awesome. You guys have an awesome rest of the day. And I will talk to you in our next episode.